In today's video, we'll be covering more disastrous interviews with actors that pretty much ruined their careers. Some of these actors were able to make a comeback following their interviews, but others were rarely heard from again. Welcome to Top 10 Beyond the Screen. I'm your host, Johnny Rogers, and before we kick this video off, let me know down below who your favorite actor is and tell us why. Also, if you don't want to miss another daily video from us, make sure you tap that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Now, with any further delay, let's get right into today's list of the Top 10 Interviews That Destroyed an Actor's Career Part 2. In at number 10, Tom Hiddleston. Back in June of 2016, it was announced that America's favorite villain, Mr. Tom Hiddleston, was romantically involved with Taylor Swift. They were dubbed a celebrity name of Hiddle Swift and all seemed, well, well and good. Although in August of 2016, they were fighting over his scheduling with Thor Ragnarok in Australia. Then by September of 2016, they were over and both sides alleged that they dumped the other one. Tom said it was because he wanted to go more public with their relationship and Taylor Swift alluded to another reason for it ending in a song of hers, I guess. Either way, Tom was a bit shaken up by the whole situation and during an interview with GQ magazine he kind of burned himself. I mean he was trying to distract from the topic of Swift by sharing his recipe for bolognese but Tom still managed to talk way too much about Taylor Swift. Even after the interview had finished he apparently visited the reporter's door at 6 a.m. to further clarify things that he had said about her in the interview. In at number nine Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton not only became famous for being the great granddaughter of the guy who created Hilton Hotels but she also invented the idea of of influencers. She would tell the paparazzi where she was going to be and then end up all over page six whenever she did something crazy at a nightclub. Although she also had a brief stint acting in reality TV shows. In fact, for a while, she believed that she was the world's top reality TV star, even though her former friend Kim Kardashian was kind of on the come up. During one interview with ABC in 2011, she was doing her very best to stay calm as the reporter grilled her with questions meant to discount her worth in society. Then Paris was asked by the reporter if she felt like her career was over. And in response, she just walked right out of the interview. I mean, people were already feeling that her career was done, but nobody, I had guess, had the heart to tell her. So when she found out just as much, she left the interview, which kind of answered the question for us. In at number eight, Kathy Lee Gifford. Kathy is best known for her 15 year run on the talk show Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, which she co-hosted with Regis Filmin. She has also done some acting in a few films, but her primary focus has been working for live entertainment news shows. Although after she maybe had one too many glasses of wine, I don't know, I think they do a Today Show happy hour, she conducted a very embarrassing interview with Martin Short. Martin was coming on the Today Show to promote, and it looks like Kathy didn't do her research beforehand. Martin's wife had passed away two years prior to the interview, and Gifford had no clue. She threw multiple questions about his wife and his relationship, but at no point did he have a chance to actually correct her. Although, right before the commercial break, he definitely had to update her. I mean, she apparently profusely apologized for this big gaffe, but her career was already tanked at that point. And if not her career, at least her reputation. In at number seven, Crispin Glover. While Crispin Glover has never really been considered a typical leading man, he has certainly distinguished himself as one of the more intriguing personalities in Hollywood. His unusual characters and personal projects have inspired a cult-like following that has dubbed him both a madman and a genius. However, an interview back in 1987 stunted his career a little bit and we wouldn't see him on many late night interviews for a while. While speaking with David Letterman, Crispin showed up as Reuben. Reuben was a character that he was portraying in an upcoming film called Reuben and Ed. Although not a single soul told Letterman that this was the intended plan, so he was completely surprised when it happened. Sometimes that works, I mean, but in this case, it was a disaster. The entire interview was just Dave trying to keep up with Crispin and his Reuben rants, but ultimately ended in Letterman just walking out of the interview. In at number six, Gary Coleman. First and foremost, rest in peace, Gary Coleman. It, it was terrible to see this great actor's career be taken down and then ridiculed when he had had to go get a regular job. I mean, before he passed, Gary did an interview in 2010 with The Insider, and things got very heated. One of those hosts started asking him questions about his ex-wife, Susan Price, but Coleman did not take this well. He began yelling expletives at the mortified host as he immediately departed the interview. It must have been a very touchy subject, but this is also a reminder of why it's important to brief guests with the questions that they'll be asked. I mean, these curveballs from reporters rarely lead to anything good, and Gary's interview is 
kind of proof of that. In at number five, Cara Delevingne. Let's just say her dry British humor was not really received by these happy-go-lucky morning news anchors at CBS Sacramento. I mean, at the start of the interview, she was asked some very dumb questions. I mean, for example, the film Paper Towns was based on a book, so they asked her if she had read the book, and then immediately after made a snide comment about her probably not having enough time to read. Now, Cara obviously takes offense to this, judging by her body language, but instead decides to flip it into a joke, saying that she didn't even read the script, just winged it. Uh, no, I never read the book or the script, actually. I kind of winged it. And the interview is actually take this as factual for a moment before her laughing kind of cuts the tension. That's not even the most awkward part of this interview, though. I think it probably is us. Yeah. <laughs> well, then on that note... We figured as much. We figured as much. We'll let you go, then. How about that? Right. We'll let you go take a little nap, maybe get a Red Bull. How about that? <laughs> After one interviewer asks her why she isn't as excited as her other interviews, she remarks that it's very early and that she thought it was going well, so again, jokingly, she said, it must be you. And the lady in the middle, oh my god, she sounded so bitter. We'll let you take a little nap and have a Red Bull? How about that? Yes. How about that level of professional journalism? Good morning, Sacramento. <laughs> Although ever since this interview, we haven't really seen Kara in any more movies, and even the ones that we have seen her in, it was like, yeah, well, uh, whatever. In at number four, Robert Pattinson. When the Twilight series was at its peak, Rob had to do a ton of press to promote the film, and his agent made it expressly clear to every single interviewer not to mention his rumored relationship. People were already speculating that Pattinson was dating co-star Kristen Stewart, but they definitely wanted to keep things as private as possible. However, when he went on air with Ryan Seacrest, things went sideways. As soon as Seacrest started asking about his rumored relationship, Rob's agent gave him the cue to leave the interview. Now, this didn't exactly destroy destroy his career, but it certainly put a bad light on the actor for being kind of so dodgy with questions. I mean, if he had have just stayed in the interview and just told Ryan that he didn't want to talk about it, I bet Ryan would have just moved on. I mean, Seacrest has been in that business for so long that he knows how to keep things professional. But I guess he missed the memo on not talking about the relationship thing. <laughs> what can you tell them about it? I also just love that you can see his agent in the back giving the old wrap it up signal to Ryan and he is definitely ignoring her. In at number three, Jim Carrey. While at the New York Fashion Week in 2017, Jim Carrey made a rare appearance and while walking down the red carpet, he did his best to avoid an interview with E! News. At first he kind of tried to twirl around a few times and not really stand still hoping that would work, but man, she was persistent. Carrey then says that he wanted to find the most meaningless event that he could go to and that's how he ended ended up there. The interviewer tries to keep the integrity of the event high and claims that it's a celebration of icons, for which Jim says, icons don't exist. I don't believe in personalities. I don't believe you exist. But there is a wonderful fragrance in the air. Before departing from this awkward interview, he leaves her with this nugget of truth. It's not our world. None That's of this is key. real? Nope. It was a while before we saw Jim Carrey again after that, but we're sure he wants it that way. I mean, it probably made keeping the Sonic live action film quiet a lot easier. In at number two, Mel Gibson. While promoting his film Edge of Darkness in a 2010 interview with WGN TV, Mel Gibson appeared like he really didn't want to be there. I mean, the best part was that he wasn't even physically there. He just was appearing via satellite because it was probably the fastest way to do this press run. Although, among all of the questions that annoyed the actor, it was when he dove into Gibson's drinking that kind of really set him off. The reporter got even more bold by asking him about his previous anti-Semitic remarks, to which Mel replied that was four years ago and he had already apologized for that. And the reporter sensing that Mel was about to cuss him out on live air, he kind of shifted back to promoting the film. Good move. Although Mel Gibson thought that the interview had disconnected, which resulted in some very troubling remarks to air live. Thanks a lot for joining us, Mel. Take care. Bye-bye. Last but certainly not least on our number one spot, Courtney Love. Courtney Love has been a mess forever. She does not handle interviews with any ounce of grace, and her crashing an interview with Madonna kind of proves my point. Back at the 1995 MTV VMAs, the interviewer was engaged in a discussion with Madonna when he notices Courtney Love yelling from down below. He then invites her onto the interview platform, even at the behest of Madonna, and things immediately turn to the worst case scenario. She starts drunkenly throwing small items at Madonna, and then she kneels down on the ground, and at that point, Madonna just walks off the stage. Courtney then stays and hijacks the entire interview, going on more drunken rants and just 
being generally all over the place. I mean, literally all over the place. And it turns out the guy should have just listened to Madonna and had security keep Courtney back. Then we wouldn't have had this. And that has been the top 10 interviews that destroyed an actor's career part two. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to our editors for all of your hard work. If you enjoyed this video, then please show us some love here by tapping that like and subscribe button. Plus, don't forget to leave us a comment down below with your thoughts on today's list. And for more videos like this one, all you gotta do is tap that playlist when it pops up. From top 10 beyond the screen, my name is Johnny Rogers. Until next time, stay classy.